What's up guys, Demeter1, 2 and 2 and it's list day. Ah yes, list day. And today we're gonna be looking at the top 10 best cards in Star Strike Blast. We're coming back, we're coming back strong and this is a cool one because Star Strike Blast is actually kind of a unique set. And it's unique for several reasons. Number one, Star Strike Blast is full of meta relevant cards, whether or not they are currently meta relevant or whether or not they are particularly strong meta relevant cards is uh, not relevant, but the list is just one banger after another, which is just pretty sweet. Two, Star Strike Blast has only ever been printed as a first edition set which means it was never given unlimited printing, like a, a second wave of stock for stores, nor was it ever given like a special edition, which means like all those meta relevant cards that were in the set held their value quite well because they didn't get reprints until most of them until years later. So this set can be quite expensive, especially when you want ultimate rare printings of the various cards that are from the set, because if you want those ultis, you're gonna pay it through the nose. Three, speaking of the ultimate rares in this set, this was the first set that was more like the modern ultis, where the border is also holographic and things like that. So that's a fun little thing, I suppose. But before we get to the list, I just wanna, uh, I just wanna welcome Cheetor and Black Arachnia here to the, uh, to the set. These two Masterpiece Collection Transformers are just really cool. Like Cheetor here, for instance, he just looks awesome. He looks like he's like pulled right out of the show. And I was also thinking about doing a toy review for these two really, really cool Transformer toys. But I figured I would ask you guys first if you guys would be interested because I'm not gonna dump a bunch of time into something that you guys are just not gonna like me doing. With all of that out of the way, let's get started on the top 10 best cards in Star Strike Blast. Number 10 is Swift Scarecrow. This set is just good card after good card, and if, like, Swift Scarecrow is one of the weakest cards in the set that are the good cards, and that really does tell you the quality of card that you can expect in this set. Swift Scarecrow is a level 1 Earth Machine with the following effect. When your opponent's monster declares a direct attack, quick effect, you can discard this card to the graveyard to negate that attack and then end the battle phase. Aw, it's a battle hand trap. Yas. And despite being a scarecrow, this is certainly Big Brain Yu-Gi-Oh. You might get into trouble. <laughs> now you might ask yourself, is this card really as good as something like a Battle Fader, which does the exact same thing, but instead of a discard, it summons itself to the board? And I would say, uh, well, yes, in, in, in a bubble, Battle Fader is better because you don't lose advantage. However, depending on what floodgates your opponent might have or what kind of effects they have on their board, sometimes Swift Scarecrow is better or just as good. It might seem a little archaic in modern Yu-Gi-Oh to be running cards that are all they do is stop a battle phase, but even in a modern sense, depending on what kind of janky, ridiculous strategy you're playing, maybe perhaps, <laughs> probably a burn deck or something, you don't really care about dealing with the cards on your opponent's side of the field, you just care about buying as much time as possible, so cards like Swift Scarecrow definitely accomplish that. Number nine is tuning. Woo! Don't ask me why there's a spell card that searches a decidedly 5Ds type archetype where its artwork is, I'm pretty sure, depicting a decidedly DM era vanilla monster. What does tuning do? This normal spell card has the following effect. Add one Synchron tuner monster from your deck to your hand, and then send one card from the top of your deck to your graveyard. You seasoned Yu-Gi-Oh players are probably saying, I feel like you're missing a line of text there at the end that says you can only use the effects of this card once per turn. It doesn't say that. So let's break this down really quick. It's a normal spell card with no activation condition. Nice. It's a reinforcements the army for a tuner monster from a specific archetype with fantastic tuner monsters. Double nice. It sends a card from your deck to the graveyard, specifically in a deck that likes having cards in the graveyard because you play cards like Jet Synchron and Glow Up Ball. Whoa! Am I your dirty little secret? That's even more amazing. And it's not a hard once per turn. It's not even a soft once per turn. There is no restriction on how many of these you can play at all. Meaning if you open more than one, you don't have to worry about bricking yourself. Wow. The only downside is it only searches the tuners. However, Synchrons, like I said, have some of the best tuners in the game, so that's barely a negative for the card. It's just nice and consistent and a fantastic support card for your Synchron strategy. 
But the 5D's era wasn't just about synchro spam, even though that was kind of the flagship deck for that whole era. We do have other things like number eight here, Gravekeeper's Recruiter archaic archetype that just gets trickles of support every once in a while. It's almost like it's a fan favorite or something. Doesn't hurt that they have one of the best field spells in the game. Prop may, may be the best field spell in the game. Anyway, what does this guy do? Level three, dark spellcaster, gravekeeper monster with the following effect. If this card you control is sent to the graveyard, add one gravekeeper's monster with 1500 or less defense from your deck to your hand. That's really good. You need to control it, so it needs to be on the board, so you can't just pitch it from your hand. However, it just says, if this card is sent to the graveyard that you control, if, if, not when, you frog. <laughs> As long as you get this thing off the board, you're getting a search. That feels, that feels pretty good. Granted, you can't get, uh, what, probably Spy the only one you can't get. You can still search most of the archetype, and <sighs> granted, it's an easy to trip activation. Maybe at this time, it might have been a little wonky, but as we've gotten more and more summoning mechanics and more and more cards in the card pool, we just, this thing has like infinite options in order for you to actually activate it. It's, it's pretty, it's, it's barely, barely a hassle. You might think this next one is part of a deck that Dave has no idea how it works, but ha <laughs> ha, joke's on you. I actually read a little of this and a few of the other cards. I've also, I've, I think I played them in Duel Links pretty briefly as well. That doesn't mean I remember what it's called though. Kara Curry Shogun MDL 00 Buray. Buray? Kara Curry Shogun Model 00 Buray. I'm spending too much time on this. Kara Curries are probably the one deck with the unique distinction in that Prohibition is next to impossible to play against this deck. <laughs> Your opponent is not going to remember what any of these are called. Kara Curries have more text in their card names than some cards do in their effect text. Yes, I know, with Prohibition, I, I think it's ruled that you can like vaguely describe a card and as long as both of us know what you're talking about, it, I guess it counts, but that's not funny. Anyway, what's this big synchro b do? Level seven earth machine synchro monster with the following effect. When this card is synchro summoned, you can special summon one Kira Curry monster from your deck to the field. Wow. Special summoning from the deck? fan freaking tastic Granted, there's a possibility it can miss timing because it's a when you can. However, this happens during the summon window, so there's not a uh, there's not a ton that's probably gonna cock block it. Most of the time, this is probably going through. Once per turn, you can target one monster on the field, change its battle position as an ignition effect. Now you might say, Dave, that card sucks. It's incredibly disrespectful. And in a bubble, I would agree with you. Uh, it's pretty underwhelming as an ignition effect to switch the battle position and not even put a card face down. That's pretty lousy. However, however, this thing's effect procs the other two synchros effects in order to get even more advantage. So it's actually a necessary ability for a Karakuri Wombo Combo. It's not immediately intuitively good, but it is necessary for the other two synchros to work. Also, a synchro monster that summons another monster to the board, perhaps a tuner monster, that just says wombo combo written all over it. Like, it's a guy, it's a guy that gets me more guys. What's with the sausage fest? That's how you wombo combo in Yugi Mans. Plus, Jerome, if you're listening, please, please make a Karakuri effect that's like a spell card or a field spell or something that, that requires your opponent to like name a Karakuri monster in your opponent's hand. I don't think that was... That'd be the most funny mechanic you could come up with this deck. I please do that. Number six is Shooting Star Dragon. Wish.com Shooting Quasar Dragon is a level 10 wind dragon monster with the following effect. This is made of one tuner synchro monster and one stardust dragon. Being a level 10 and stardust being a level eight, you're probably using formula synchron. Huh, you might say. That sounds like a big pain in the butt to make. And it, it probably kind of is. But remember, Shooting Quasar Dragon also summons this thing, cheesing it out of the extra deck as part of his ability. So uh, there is a decently easy way of getting this out. Now your problem is how do you make Shooting Quasar Dragon, but, but still, you have, op you have options. He's also the cover card of the set, and uh, he might be a bit of a pain in the butt to make. However, his effect is very good. So he's at least worth the sunk cost. Once per turn, you can excavate the top five cards of your deck. 
and then you put those cards back in your deck and shuffle, and this thing can make a maximum number of attacks during a battle phase up to the number of tutor monsters you excavated. With 3,300 attack power, that means he's big number. Be sure to get your big number t-shirt to drop one teespring down at David. Meaning if you give him a couple of attacks during a battle phase, he could probably end the game himself. And he's not one of those stupid multi-attackers that can only multi-attack against monsters. It's just, that's how many attacks he gets. So, nice. Nice! And also, once per turn during either player's turn when an effect is activated that would destroy a card on the field, you can negate that effect, and if you do, destroy the card that tried to destroy a card. So he inherits Stardust Dragon's effect, except it's a little better because you don't have to get him off the board in order to use the ability. It's just a free negate of a destruction. And then he finally has a third effect. Wow, this thing does a lot. Once per turn when your opponent's monster declares an attack, you can target the attacking monster, banish this card, and if you do, negate that attack. During the next end phase, special summon this banished monster. Okay, so that last effect is uh, not the greatest thing in the world. However, it is nice that it has it. it. You know, it's a free effect. It could not do it. It would still be a fantastic synchro monster, but the fact that it has one more effect is just icing on the cake. It's It, it does more. That's a positive. Always nice. It's just a really, really nice level 10 synchro monster. Here we go, top five. Number five is Different Dimension Ground. This trap card is basically a one-turn macrocosmos. All right, number four. <laughs> this normal trap card says this turn, any monster sent to the graveyard is banished instead. So it's not a, it's it's more like a one-turn uh, dimensional fissure, but it's a trap card, which is why I would say it's more like a macrocosmos, but y you know what I mean. Being a normal trap card means you can search this thing with trap trick. Obviously, that's a little anachronistic for when the set came out. However, that just means the card got better over time, not worse, which is, again, weird for Yu-Gi-Oh! And the fact that it is a one-turn uh, macrocosmos-ish type trap card means if macrocosmos type cards hurt your deck but hurt your opponent more, being able to only have that effect for the duration of a turn means that you don't have to worry about it bouncing it back and stopping your deck from working. Obviously not a stellar main deck card, however, as a side deck option, this card definitely sees play even to the modern day because sometimes simply making your opponent banish every monster they're sending to the graveyard for just this turn will either stop them from doing everything or make everything they're doing just a awful minus in card advantage. And that is, it sounds like a good effect to me. Also, it's got that Digrapher DD Warrior Lady card lore stuff. Nice. Remember when I said you could use Formula Synchron to make your shooting star dragon? Hey, look, it's Formula Synchron. He's in the same set. Go figure. When this card is synchro summoned, draw one card. Nice! There is nothing like an extra deck monster that helps mitigate the advantage you used in order to make it. It's a generic one tuner, one non tuner type synchro monster, so it means that it's not the hardest thing in the world to make. It's the easiest of the synchro monsters. It is also a synchron, which means you can use it for the synchro monsters that require. Uh, any Synchron monster to make. There are a few. And in a Synchron deck, you have tons of level ones. The Synchrons, a lot of them are level ones, and the, the stuff you're making, like something like Love Leader or something that's also a level one, rest in peace, means that in the deck you would think you'd play this in, it works quite well. And the fact that you're drawing a card means you mitigate the advantage you lost. Meaning that in the right Wombo Combo Synchro deck, with so, like TG Hyper Librarian, Level Leader, and things like that, Glow Up Bulb, it will possibly not even cost you anything and it'll be effectively a free synchro summon. Once per chain, ooh, spicy. During your opponent's main phase, immediately after this effect resolves, synchro summon one monster using this card. All right, a tuner that allows you to synchro summon on your opponent's turn sounds broken, shokan. Synchro summoning on your opponent's turn is actually a handy strategy because you can catch your opponent off guard. If you end your board with something like Stardust Dragon, your opponent might know how to play around it because they started their turn with it established on board. However, waiting for them to play a few cards, get committed to some sort of strategy, and then pull the rug out from under them and synchro summon into something they're not expecting, ha, means they might not be able to deal with it. Not to mention with cards like Black Rose Dragon, you can just nuke the board in the middle of their combo, so it doesn't quite matter what the hell they were doing, you just ruined their day completely. Formula Synchron is a fantastic synchro tuner monster, it is just extremely versatile, it mitigates the advantage you use, and its typing is neat and its level is pretty solid, meaning that it just has tons of function. Good card. 
this set really is just banger one after another. Number three, Droll Bird. This level two wind normal monster with 600 attack and 500 defense has the following flavor text. I'm just f with you. Droll and Lock Bird. Oh, the hand trap to end all hand traps. Seriously though, uh, I would say arguably we have not gotten a hand trap that is more effective than Droll and Lock Bird. Yes, Ash Blossom, Ghost Ogre, all those cards are very good when they work, but a lot of times they are just one for ones. Nothing shuts down an opponent quite like a well-timed Droll and Lock Bird. Oh boy. Also, this effect is a little strange, so let's just break it down piece by piece. Level 1, Wind Spellcaster. If a card is added from the main deck to your opponent's hand, quick effect, you can discard this card, and for the rest of the turn, cards cannot be added from your opponent's main deck to their hand. This does not include their draw phase. Okay, so, if your opponent activates Terraforming, you cannot chain this to that. No, at least if that's the only thing they've done so far. However, if they play like, I don't know, Elemental Hero Stratos, search a card, and then play Terraforming, now, now you can do it. At any point after they have added a card from their deck to their hand, this card is now live. Meaning, you as the top tier Yu-Gi-Oh player that you are can sneakily use it right at the right opportunity to really just get them in the butthole. <laughs> My strategy though, chaining it to something like their second search means that they're going into something uh, <laughs> thinking they're going to be able to set up for their play to only find that it's going to fizzle and they are in a terrible scenario. There isn't much to say about the card other than it's just a fantastic hand trap and at the right time can completely win you a game. All right, going by the same generic rules we always use, banned, limited, semi-limited cards get chunked up the list because, hey, most of the time, if the card is on the forbidden limited list, it must be very good, right? And that does hold true most of the time. And in no exception for this set, Glow Up Bulb. Yeah, Glow Up Bulb's also in this set. This set is just fantastic. And this card's banned now. Damn you, Halka Fabrak, blah, blah, blah. Halle Fabrak. Glow Up Bulb is a level one earth plant tuner monster with the following effect. If this card's in your graveyard, you can mill the top card of your deck to the graveyard to special this card from your graveyard. Graveyard. You can only use the effect of Glow Up Bulb once per duel. Wow, they really don't want you to abuse this card. However, it just shows you how good Glow Up Bulb must be if it can have a hard once per duel effect and still be stuck on the ban list. A tuner that summons itself from the graveyard is very, very strong. It's just free advantage. The fact that it mills a card from your deck to the graveyard is just very strong. It's free setup. Depending on what card you hit, you might even get some advantage out of it. It's a plant tuner monster, which means it's extremely searchable. It's also, hell, by that extension, it's also level one. You have lots of options to get this specifically out of your deck immediately to the field. Whether it's Helky Frelky, Halakui for Rex, Blossom or One for One, you have options to get this on the board. And then, because it's now in your graveyard, because you synchroed or linked with it, you can now get it back on your board. Woo! So free. Whether or not it's annoying that Halky Fibrax got this thing banned or not is up to you as the player. However, one could say that the card, even without it, is just very strong and still very easy to get out of the deck immediately to the field. So the card is quite powerful regardless. All right, we have an honorable mention. It's actually kind of a neat one. I would have liked to put it on the list, but the Discord felt that, you know, even though it's good, it, it had a very, very niche function. So, okay. Mirror of the Ice Barrier. Ice Barriers have a good card that's not one of their Synchro Monsters. <laughs> this is actually a quick play spell card, believe it or not. During your turn, each time a card is removed from play from your field, your graveyard, and or your hand by the effect of a monster, colon, ooh. if a card in your hand is removed from play, remove two random cards from play from your opponent's hand. If a card you control is removed from play, remove two cards your opponent controls from play. And if a card in your graveyard is removed from play, banish two cards from your opponent's graveyard. It's a mirror that looks like Trish, and if someone uses a Trish on you, you bounce it back and do like three times the Trish to them. Go figure. It's a mirror of the ice barriers. See what they did there? I'm not gonna have to go too much into why this honorable mention is an absolutely fantastic card. It's a Brokan Shokan, certainly. However, it's a bit niche in its function because it relies on your opponent to do something extremely specific in order to get the most mileage out of the card. It's almost like it was completely designed to be a hard counter to Trishula, Dragon of the Ice Barriers. Ice Barriers are such a stupid deck and incoherent that they have one of the best synchros in the game 
that they can barely make and in the same archetype have a hard counter to their own boss monster. <laughs> what? Uh. That doesn't take away from the fact that this card is actually really good and did see some play in formats like Necroz because Oh look, Necroz Trishula does the same thing as Synchro Trishula for the most part, so this also works against him. It's a cheeky side deck card against Necroz. It saw play during that format, I believe. I remember that actually. But in order to maintain balance in this world, for every time we say an Ice Barrier card is good, we must say one is bad. And you know what? This this set had a bad one. It had a really bad one. The dishonorable mention for Starstrike Blast is. <laughs> Royal Knight of the Ice Barrier. This level five, oh, ew. Water Warrior has the following effect. When this card is tribute summoned. <laughs> Ooh, oh, this deck is supposed to be a synchro deck? Oh, you shouldn't be tribute summoning in a synchro strategy. Honestly, it doesn't matter what it does. That alone is just terrible. But anyway, special summon an ice coffin token to your opponent's side of the field. It's a level one aqua water monster with a thousand attack, zero defense. If you could just somehow if you could just somehow get the token on your side of the board, you could combo with Wetlands. Broke. Oh God, this is so awful. God does not lie. Only men lie. Then you're not God. You're just, you're just a man. Ice Bearers are supposed to be a synchro deck, I think. I mean, you gave them some of the best synchros in the game, so it stands to reason you're supposed to make those synchro monsters with the main deck monsters. So you thought it'd be a really cool idea to give the deck a level five that has an effect on tribute summon. So it's not like you just cheese this onto the field with another effect, cause you know, it's a level five, so you can't just normal summon it. Nah, it's intended to be tribute summoned. That is fine. Terrible. You're already bleeding advantage when you synchro summon, so if you're not you're not synchro summoning the right combo pieces like with Formula Synchron and TG Hyper Librarian, you're gonna be bleeding advantage. So you know what you should do? You should tribute summon and bleed more advantage. Feels broke. And not only is that a neg one to play this card, it's actually a neg two because you give your opponent a free token. Ah! Oh! If it gave the token to you, it might be okay in a synchro strategy. It's a tribute summon, still pretty clunky, but at least it's giving you another bonus monster so that, hey, you can use that to synchro summon because it's a token. It doesn't do anything else. But no, it gives it to your opponent. Why? I can make a 20 minute video about why this card is just fucking terrible. This card is fucking terrible. It has nothing to do with anything. It's like when they made this archetype, they just had a bunch of effects on a, on a dark board. And you're like, what's the level five do? Ah, it's got a bad monarch ability. Nice. And with 2,000 attack, 2,000 defense, it's not like they're balancing its effect out with like, cause it's like a really abnormally strong level five or something. It's actually kind of weak. It's weirder than Cyber Dragon. Thank you so much guys for watching the video. If you guys want to help support the channel, check out my links down in the description below. I've got links to the Discord, Facebook, and Patreon if you want to get in touch with me, help with the lists, things like that. Or if you want to save some money, you can head over to Metamat's website, use my code TROLLMETA at checkout. You can save 10% off a custom cloth playmat like one of these bad boys. Or if you want to waste your money on expensive cardboard, use my TCG player link in the description below and put off your financial obligations. All right, number one is Vanity's Emptiness. Oh, thank God. Vanity's Emptiness is a continuous trap card with the following effect. Neither player can special summon monsters. <laughs> oh, that's a spicy floodgate. If a card is sent from your deck or field to the graveyard, destroy this card. This might be the perfect floodgate. It has a fantastic effect, blocking both players from special summoning. That's fair. Floodgates should floodgate both players. If they floodgate only one, you're a dick. <laughs> Sweet. It also has a way of shutting itself off built into the card. But why is it banned if it's so perfect? Well, because you can just build a big stupid board, put this thing face down, let your opponent start their turn, flip it, be like, yo, come at me, bro. I have all these negates on my monsters and you can't special summon shit. So it uh, looks like I won the duel. And that, that's how the card was used. A blanket stopping your opponent from special summoning is just a fantastic floodgate because what do you know, it's mostly what decks do nowadays, and it's what decks have been probably doing for the last 15 years or whatever it is. So like, 
Yeah, this thing's a fantastic floodgate. Ironically, it didn't see a ton of play when it came out in this set, mostly because I think people just thought it was bad. It was even a common in this set, actually. It was short printed, sure, but it was still just a common. And like, I think people thought like, oh, well, it's easy to shut off because you can just send a card to their graveyard. There was one, there must have been some cheeky person that used this to some sort of effect when it came out though, but it didn't see tons of play till much later. I think during, during the, ooh, what was that? Oh, when was that? Was it Duelist Alliance format or was it a little bit before that? I'm getting old, it's all starting to blend together. I remember when this was like a $50 common and every time they reprinted it, it was like a short print. Sounds like Konami, right? Overall, a fantastic floodgate, and um, I wonder if we could have it back. I'm not sure. Give us Pankratops back or something, and then we'll talk. Anyway, guys, that was Star Strike Blast. This is a fantastic set, and it was actually a lot of fun to talk about because it was like, ah, oh, thank God. Really good cards. Not just like the best cards in the set, and they're all just kind of shitty. No, like some legitimately good cards. And it was kind of fun because I was like, wow, I forgot all these did come out in one set. <laughs> anyway, guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. And remember, guys, if you don't troll, no matter who will, I will see you guys next time. Well, looks like they made it through the video. But you'd still be a slacker if you didn't subscribe up there. Maybe you should check out one of these other videos. Maybe then you'd actually be a decent opponent for me.